My name is Rhapsody, welcome to Disco Elysium. Disco Elysium is an open world, narrative heavy, combat light role playing game that is widely credited as being one of the best written games of all time, even this soon after its release. You might recognize it from having won all four awards it was nominated for at the Game Awards in the last year, including the best narrative, best independent game, best role playing game, and fresh indie game. Let's click new game. Ooh, I cannot wait to get dug into this. I, I played a little bit of this uh, to see, to assess if it was something that was going to be right for the channel. Uh, and that was about two months ago. In the intervening period of time, I haven't necessarily had the ability to start another series, so it's a little bit delayed. I do apologize for that. But I knew that I had to do this. So here we are. Alright, so we have uh, three different base archetypes. The Thinker, Sensitive, and Physical. Uh, the thinker, extremely intelligent, very bad with people, knows interesting facts and comes up with original ideas. Uh, so your intellect is your capacity to reason, your psyche is your power to influence yourself and others. Uh, your FYS is physique, and that's how well your body is built, and motorics, how well you can move your body as well. Neat. And it looks like those stats control other characters also. Uh, encyclopedia, it's not necessarily showing me what that does. Uh, we'll look across to sensitive, very psychological, a magnetic personality, but unstable. Might begin to lose his mind. And then we have physical, extremely physical, interacts with the world through his body, gets things done, but dumb as a rock. So all of these seem to be the same array, just provided differently. So one really good one, one decent one, a garbage one, and a less garbage one. Uh, I'm going to create my own character, though. Okay, so... I kind of want to make it, like, a little bit based on me. Um, I'm not exactly weak, but I don't do anything to make myself stronger. I don't, like, regularly work out. The best I do is, like, run occasionally. Uh, and I, I, I am six foot four, and I am a very kind of prone to clumsiness kind of person. I don't necessarily uh, understand the length of my limbs. Uh, so I'm going to say that my sense is how agile I am. I can put that down a little bit. I, You know what? I'm probably going to go one. I like characters that are really good at something and really bad at something else. Uh, the problem is, effectively, what I've created here is kind of... Well, actually, that'd go down, that'd go up, right? Uh, effectively, what I've created here is just the psyche character. Oh well, I'm okay with that. Let's go. Okay, so now each of those four can be placed into any of these different ones. Let's go through the list. Select your signature skill. The skill you select will gain a plus one bonus. Additionally, the learning cap for every skill of the same type will be raised by plus one. Uh, I think maybe I make Psyche my signature skill. Can I? Or is it just belief? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's just these individual ones. Right. We'll have a look through then. Logic. Wield raw intellectual power to deduce the world. Encyclopedia. Call upon your knowledge. Produce fascinating trivia. Rhetoric. Enjoy the art of persuasion. Uh, enjoy rigorous intellectual discourse. Drama. Play the actor, lie, and detect lies. Conceptualization, understand creativity and see art in the world. Visual calculus is to reconstruct crime scenes, make laws of physics work for the law. Volition is to hold yourself together and keep your morale up. Inland Empire is hunches and gut feelings, dreams in waking life. Ooh. Oh god, they actually have like a, a depth even after that. Okay, so it's good for dreamers, paranatural investigators, and mental creators. Inland Empire is the unfiltered wellspring of imagination, emotion, and foreboding. It enables you to grope your way through the invisible dimensions of reality, gaining insight into that which we can't see. What's really going? What do these enigmatic riddles mean for the world fate? At high levels, Inland Empire animates the inanimate. You'll have conversations with your clothing. Conversations that may change the course of the investigation if you're not thrown in the loony bin first. With low uh, Inland Empire, however, you'll be void of imagination and character. And then how you shape the cosmos. Empathy. 
is good for judges of character, interviewers, and interrogators. Uh, empathy breaks into the souls of others and forces you to feel what's inside. It enables you to notice social cues that others might miss. Perhaps a hidden sadness that you could just coax out a little more. A strange joy from someone who should be bereaved or a hidden resentment that could return to harm you later. At high levels, empathy really puts you in other people's shoes. You'll cry for their sorrows, punch walls to relieve their angers, and you'll even be a more unstable cop. With low empathy, however, you'll be an ungainly... You'll be an ungainly beast. Hmm? You'll be an ungainly beast, unable to talk to anyone without upsetting them. So one of the things that I really appreciate about this game is you don't have just downsides from the low stats. In fact, you also get downsides as you specialize in different stats and different skills. That's incredibly, incredibly interesting because it gives you a depth of characterization that you can't necessarily always get as you level up in other RPGs because you just generally become better at everything, right? There's no, you know, there's no speech 100 in Fallout that is a garbage option where you'd actually prefer to have speech 2 instead. That, in particular, is one of the very, very salient reasons that I wanted to play this as a RPG on the channel. Authority. Good for leaders, experts of psychological warfare, and respect junkies. Authority urges you to assert and reassert your dominance over those around you. It enables you to understand the power dynamics of groups of thugs, how far you can push a perpetrator, and how to establish control of situations. At high levels, authority demands respect. Even a perceived slight will send you into knee-breaking mode. With low authority, however, you're forever stuck in awkward situations, like when you suffer psychological breakdowns after you yell at teenagers and they laugh at you. Esprit de corps. Uh, esprit de corps is the very spirit of understanding. Oh, uh, cool for cops, cop aficionados, and pretend cops. Okay, we can go one over then. Uh, cool for diplomats, charmers, and sociopaths. Suggestion. Suggestion urges a soft power approach. If people think they want what you want, you've already won. This skill enables you to implant ideas into the minds of others. You can make the citizens like you more. You can make gangsters turn on each other too. Many crime rings have been broken by just a little doubt after all. At high levels, it makes you affable to everyone and more resistant to their charms in turn. But all that schmoozing and oozing charm will make you slimy. And you'll know it, even if no one else does. With low levels of suggestion though, you'll have difficulty getting any kind of rapport with others. You'll be alone, both during the day and the night. I'll read the description of this one, don't worry. Esprit de corps is the very spirit of policing. The Copgeist. It enables you to understand your blue-souled sisters and brothers, not only by picking up subtle signals from your partner, but by witnessing flash sideways scenes as they play out in your precinct. At high levels, you'll be the very heart of the police force, not only willing, but able and... Sorry, not only willing and able, but obliged to take a bullet for your partner. However, without Esprit de Corps, you'll be flying blind, unable to recognize and understand discreet remarks colleagues make in high-stakes situations. Remarks that might just save your life. I will go through each of these. I understand that this is a very long intro. If you're not necessarily interested in the character creation, I'd recommend skipping forward about five, maybe ten minutes. But considering we are going to be playing this character throughout the whole game, I think it's very, very important to get this right. Also, this is a good brief into the fact that this game has so many words in it. So The Witcher 3 is is largely known for having a huge amount of dialogue and a huge amount of written text in it. It's got about 450,000 lines of dialogue. Uh, lines of dialogue or words? One or the other. Unfortunately, I can't necessarily remember it off the top of my head. However, this game has a million. Yup. Logic. Cool for analysts, pure rationalists, obviously, logicians. Logic urges you to analyze the living daylight to have the case. It enables you to piece evidence together, detect inconsistencies in statements, and impress everyone with your astonishing conclusions. It's the bread and butter of many a detective. At high levels, it'll allow you to solve even the most complicated puzzle. You'll be very proud and thus susceptible to intellectual flattery. But for those blinded by their own brilliance, they will often miss important clues. With low levels of logic, you're going to have a hard time solving even the simplest puzzle. If you manage to find the pieces, good luck putting them together. Encyclopedia. 
Good for thinkers, historians, and trivia freaks. Encyclopedia makes you a know-it-all, turning your mind into a database of facts. It enables you to draw on these facts innately, offering a wealth of background knowledge to all things related and unrelated to your case. Who knows when, sorry, who knows when the history of cigarette brands will provide the breakthrough that you need to arrest a murderer, or when knowledge of pre-revolutionary guns might save a life. At high levels, Encyclopedia shares this wealth of knowledge to an almost overwhelming degree. While it may give you crucial breakthroughs, it'll more often just clutter your mind with useful tidbit, useless rather tidbits. With low levels though, you'll be forced to work with only the clues in front of you. Without any background knobbing, uh, knobbing, without any background knowledge, copying is gonna be tough stuff. I was trying to read the next words. <laughs> Dang it. All right, uh, rhetoric, cool for ideologues, conversationalists, and would-be politicians. Rhetoric urges you to debate, make intellectual discourse, nitpick, and win. It enables you to break down arguments and hear what people are really saying. You'll spot fallacies as soon as they're used. What exactly did the waiter leave out of their testimony? What was the dancer trying to divert you from? Was that double entendre intended, or did you just get an accidental lead? At high levels, rhetoric will make you an impressive political beast. Ones who believe, uh, ones, one whose beliefs rather are impenetrable, which is to say one whose mind will not change, one who will calcify. With low rhetoric though, you'll have a hard time of shooting down any argument. Nailing people to their testimonies will be nay impossible. Drama, good for undercover cops, thespians of the stage and psychopaths. Drama urges you to treat the world as a stage and on it to perform. It urges you to lie, enables you to lie rather, to concoct the most elaborate and wonderful stories, to take on ingenious personas and perform acts of stagecraft in entertaining amalgam of forbury and deceit. As well, it also enables you to see through would-be actors and their false antics. If they lie, you'll know immediately. At high levels, it may render you an insufferable thespian, one prone to hysterics and bouts of paranoia, for you know the world is a stage, and to know that truth is a vanity. However, with low drama, you cannot lie, or even discern when others lie. And a cop who can't do either is a cop who's soon going to be lying six feet under. Conceptualization, good for creatives, psychedelic fanciers, and critics. Conceptualization has a special role it wants you to play in the world. Not the role of the cop, but of art cop. It enables you to make fresh associations, to delve into world concepts from yarn carps, uh, not familiar, uh, postmodernist carpery, to Revachol's arabesque architectural style, uh, style did, whoo, dideridada, 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 uh, and even the concept of hardcore. And then, importantly, to add your own contribution to see the works. Conceptualization makes you big at high levels, perhaps too big. It's ostentatious, demanding great, uh, grand displays. Why live life when you can throw yourself into a live volcano? At low levels, however, you'll be unable to see the world in creative light. You'll be unable to contribute to conversations in an art gallery. Only boring people will invite you to their dust parties. Visual calculus is good for forensic scientists, tactical fighters, and math-minded people. Visual calculus versus you not only in the laws of the state, but the laws of nature. It enables you to create a virtual crime scene model in your mind's eye. You'll see how the bullet shattered in the glass, and from that trace, its trajectory and its mathematical precision. You'll also count so many footprints, and at a glance, discern shoe design and weight and size, as well as the height, weight, and gender of the one who wore them. At high levels, visual calculus makes the world reveal its secrets to you. But you may be so absorbed by your own mind diorama, you don't notice as crooks steal your pants. However, at low levels, your mind's eye will be blind. Reconstructing crime scenes will be difficult without outside help. Endurance. Good for fighters who can take a hit and lookouts who don't sleep and human batteries. Endurance is your metabolism and circulatory system. It improves your health, one of the two health pools in the game. It enables to survive being a cop. Who cares if you can't aim a gun if you can take a few bullets? Why be afraid of drugs that hurt your health if you're a very, very healthy man? At high levels, endurance enables you to take a few knocks to the head and enjoy a greater quantity of drugs and shake off a few cardiac arrests. It makes you a powerful man who looks down on the weaklings who can't get up. 
can't keep up, rather. However, cops with low endurance are likely to struggle. The body is frail already, and the flesh of a cop will often be tested. If it doesn't pass, it dies. I'll tell you this. In the the <clears throat> in the recording for this that I did, uh, well, not recording, but the, the little bit of a play that I did to test whether or not I wanted to play this on the channel, I reached to try and get my tie off of a, uh, like a ceiling fan. And whilst reaching, I extended my arm so far that my endurance failed and I had a heart attack and died within three minutes of starting the game. So that's the kind of game that we're playing, just to give you a hint. Pain threshold. Pain threshold, uh, it's good for unstoppable fighters, guys who won't die and masochists. Pain Threshold ignores damage, so you can push on, bloodied and crawling to the bitterest end. It enables you to negate damage you would otherwise take, even mental pain, heartache, and loneliness. In fact, these things can become a thrill you seek out and per uh, perversely revel in. At high levels, it turns itself into a seriously unhealthy way with full-on self-destructive behavior. Oh, it turns in on itself in a seriously unhealthy way. And with low pain tolerance, you'll suffer too easily. Even a slap from a teenager will make you whine and complain. Physical instrument, good for muscle men, bare knuckle brawlers, and gym teachers. Physical instrument is not only your muscles and your skeleton, it's your ability to use them effectively. It enables you to do push-ups, sit-ups, knockout punches, and 360 degree spin kicks. It's one size fits all solution to thriving and surviving in a physical world. It allows you to break doors and chains and bones, and it makes you laugh at Namba Pambis who can't. You'll be manned up, uh, manned up, encouraging others to curl iron until they're manned up too. At low levels, however, you'll have a hard time arresting anyone who isn't infirm or already dead. Indeed, engaging in physical confrontations could leave you in either state. Electrochemistry uh, is good for high flyers, party enthusiasts, and cops who need lightning. Electrochemistry is the animal inside of you, the beast longing to be indulged, longing to be unleashed and to indulge and enjoy. It enables you to take drugs with fewest negative side effects. It also enables you to better investigate lurid matters. If you need to understand a chemical breakdown or talk to someone to blast it out of their mind or understand sexual dynamics, electrochemistry is there to guide you. At high levels, it makes you a man of unrestrained pleasure, an unrepentant Lothario who leers at people with a bottle of speed and a plastic bendy straw in the other hand. But with low levels, you'll be too innocent to be effective. Without a working knowledge of drugs and sex, the city will be difficult to understand. Signature skills, uh, Shivers is good for city lovers, the wisest of the streetwise, and genuinely supernatural. Shivers come when the temperature drops and you become more keenly aware of your surroundings. It enables you to hear the city itself, to belong in the streets, truly belong. It's a supra-natural ability. Old wrongs play out in present time. Scenes across the city happen in front of you, but who's speaking to you? At high levels, it may make you seem mad to the outside world. As you listen to the city, you don't listen to others. Your superiors may begin to worry. With low shivers, you'll seldom hear the city speaking to you. And if you can't hear it, how can you hope to save it? We're in the home stretch now. I do apologize that the first 20 minutes is just reading stuff. Oh uh, yeah. I'm gonna probably pop a link in the description down below uh, for people who wanna skip this part. The first episode is going to be much longer than the rest of the episodes in the series to compensate for this. Cool for high strong investigators, shoot now, ask questions later cops and surprise haters. Half light is your fight or flight response. It enables you to sense the way situations are about to turn. It injects palpable fear into your heart. Fear that urges you to act before it's too late to ever act again. Fear that makes you frighten others. It's the aggression that lets you squeeze every last drop of information out of a witness. At high levels, Half-Light makes you ultra attuned to the world. It is perpetual fear of your own shadow, of someone else's name or scent. You'll be always ready, always to pounce and physically interrogate passers-by. At low levels, however, you'll find your survival instinct is lacking, and your methods limp-wristed. Those who respect violence will not respect you. Hand-eye coordination. Good for trick shooters, snipers, and jugglers. Hand-eye coordination loves the interactions between you and things that fly in the air. It enables you to catch coins from mob bosses, shoot straight, and understand firearms intimately. Want to know the precise make and mark of a pistol? HE coordination's got you. Want to shoot someone with it? Ditto. At high levels, it makes you deadly, supposing you've a weapon in your hand. But once you do, it will compel you to take the shot, even if it's not the best approach. 
At low levels, however, you'll be even more of a, a disaster in waiting, because when the guns go off, and they always do, you'll probably hit the wrong target. Perception is fine for urban scavengers, centralists, and fine detail detectives. Perception wants you to be open to the world, with eyes, ears, and nose working at full capacity. It enables you to take in what others don't notice. The little wad of bills hidden away in the sugar bowl, the odor of perp, hiding beneath the floorboards, the gulp of a suspect after claiming they've nothing to hide. At high levels, it allows you to take in every final detail of the physical world, enough to overwhelm all but the strongest mind. However, with low levels, you're gonna miss out on everything. After all, you can't arrest what you can't see, hear, or smell. Reaction speed is good for shot dodgers, thinkers on their feet, and pinball heads. Reaction speed is the agility of your body and mind. It is instinct. It enables you to dodge punches, knives, and bullets. Also, sucker punches of the verbal kind. You'll be more streetwise, never lost words, or lacking a witty comeback. Your mental alacrity allows you to connect little details on the fly, working in tandem with your intellect skills. Hmm, interesting. At high levels, it makes your twitch reflex freakishly good. However, Whenever your body reacts before your mind, innocent situations can turn bad fast. You're high strung, overly alert. At low levels, though, you probably won't be the one shooting first, which probably means you won't be shooting at all. Savoir faire is good for acrobats, thieves, and unbearable show-offs. Savoir faire urges you to be better than you are. It urges you to be disco. Slip by others in Samoran, uh, Samoran boxing style and then tumble out the back with unexpected acrobatics. It enables you to move silent footsteps, to groove off of a good beat, and to lift useful evidence off perps without them noticing. It'll also make you a cooler cop, whose athletic flair will certainly impress the citizenry. At high levels, savoir faire will make you not only the king of cool, which is, as much to say, the most stylish douchebag in all of Reshol, Nobody will see you until they're re uh, until you're ready to be seen, and then they'll get the full treatment, whether they want it or not. At low levels, however, you'll be a bumbling, feckless cop, unable to catch a pair of keys thrown by your partner without them hitting you in the eye. Signature skill uh, interfacing is good for machina uh, machinists, 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 machinists. Uh, Tinkerers and instrument players. I don't know if I'm going with like Deus Ex Machina or Machine, right? That's why I don't really know which route to work with there. Interfacing wants you to connect to machines, to use and improve them, because that makes you a better human organism. It enables you to understand interactions with machines, be that how to repair the motor of a Kinema motor carriage, how to analyze the way a suspect uses a pen, or how to refigure electrical circuits. It even lets you steal keys of a key ring without being noticed. At high levels, isolating, uh, interfacing will isolate you from society. Why bother with people when you can talk to machines? And why bother with things like money when you can just pocket that display sandwich? At low levels, however, you'll have a crucial part of the world cut off from you. People who use machines commit crimes all the time, but if you can't understand how a crime was accomplished, how can you hope to solve it? Finally, composure. 25 minutes in, my god. Uh, good for card players, and military fetishists, and cool people. Composure wants you not to crack up, or at least it wants you to not crack up in front of other people. It enables you to put up a strong front. It keeps your emotions hidden from the world and helps you to read body language of others to sense cracks in their own composure. As well, it keeps you looking good while you do it. You'll rock that disco outfit a lot more if you don't slouch. At high levels, composure will make you tuck in your gut and maintain a certain expression. Even lying in bed late at night when no one else can see you, you'll have to keep it up. You'll never be able to stop. With low composure though, You'll always be the first to crack. Every cop's got a point where all that fear and rage comes spilling out. And the ones who don't unleash it, don't stay on, uh, who unleash it rather, don't stay on the force much longer. Perhaps worse still, you won't make the ranks of fashion police. All right. So if I'm making this kind of like loosely based on myself, the three that I'm thinking about are uh, as making my signature. Oh, hang on. Can I only make... Wait, how's, how's this work? Have I already chosen my signature skill? No, I haven't. Good. Okay, so I can set any of these to be my signature. So the ones that are coming to mind are Encyclopedia, Rhetoric, and Empathy, but also Savoir Faire. Oh, no, 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 not Savoir Faire. Sorry, Reaction Speed. 
largely because it interfaces with intellect for the the comebacks and stuff like that those are probably the only four out of these that i would consider definitely not volition kind of want my volition to get lower in fact all right i think i'm gonna be a rhetorician confirm do i not get to level any of the other stuff oh no you probably level them past this point that'll make sense the furies are at home in the mirror it's their address even the clearest water if deep enough can drown it there is nothing only warm primordial blackness your conscious ferments in it no larger than a single grain of malt you don't have to do anything anymore Never, ever, ever, or simply keep on non-existing? Never, ever, ever? Never, ever, ever, baby. <laughs> I'm gonna simply keep on non-existing. And an audience amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. What was that about ex-something? An awareness creeps up on you. A mass lies hidden in your dead angle, soaking in some lurid acidic sauces. Bloated and shameful pool of meat surrounding you. This is a terrible line of questioning, and it will only lead to more awareness of the meat thing. I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. Uh plunge back into the fountain was dead. No, I wanted to know about the X something. X tenderness. It is foolish of you to resurface to the loss. Not after all the damage you suffered to get here. Some of it irreversible. Stay. Sail with me through the abyss of Allagic Zone. Allons-y, never let me go. Or, no, I want to get off now. I like pain and burning light and wanting things from people who don't want to give them to me. Do you really? I chose the second one. Don't be naive, of course not. I want to sail the inky blackness until forever ends. I do. Let me off. You wouldn't like it if I told you what was back there. Why'd you think you had to bludgeon yourself into oblivion? Or did you not sent yourself marinating? Poured so much of yourself. Could have been carried away, did we, Chef? Ooh. Uh, Inland Empire. Okay, so you can see uh, that was a trigger. So uh, effectively, there was a, a gate, a check for my Inland Empire skill. It was easy but I have very high Inland Empire, so I was probably going to succeed it anyway. And that'll give me a little bit more information about this particular uh, event instance or possibly even broader the world. Fear and apprehension. You should ask what's out there first. I don't care. I'm an idiot. A brave idiot. Uh-uh. Uh, wait, I did this to myself? Or tell me what's waiting for me. Wait, I did this to myself? Yes, you're one. Tell me, what's waiting for me? There's this giant ball there, in evil apes. And the evil apes are juking it out on the ball. You're one of them. It's basically all just evil apes juking it out on a giant ball. How big is the ball? You can't even make out it's a ball when you're juking it out. It's that large. How small are the apes? Infinitesimally small. And this juking it out I keep hearing about, what's that? Buying for resources. A stupid expression you picked up somewhere. The part of the presentation you want to take home with you is this. You have to beat the other evil apes in the face. Or you lose. That's sad. Yes, it is. And you drowned in that sadness a long time ago. What do you mean drowned? You lost. That makes sense. Encyclopedia, medium, success. The sound outside, you recognize it. It's a Kupri Kinema... Motor carriage. <laughs> so you can already see the tie going around there at the top. That's what killed me last time. 
Let's try and not have it kill us this time. Okay. So I have my various interactables. This magnum sized bottle of Commodore Red is empty. Let me go get these pants. Perfect. Item gain, flare cut trousers. Immediately pop them on. Let's go check this. Bunch of tapes being destroyed. Looks like someone tore out the tape while the song was playing. This reel-to-reel -reel tape player is still on, rolling empty. Perception hearing. Uh, you hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare-cut pants. Push them out. Uh, perception sight. You gained the key to room one. It says, whirling in rags on the aluminum... Aluminium. Oh, I was so used to the American games with the aluminum, aluminum, aluminum. No. It says, whirling in rags on aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. You should open the door. All right, let's go get that tie. Hopefully I don't die this time. Ceiling fan. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. Inland Empire. So that was like an automatic roll that just happened there. Inland Empire. Or has it been consigned there as punishment? You feel as though this creature is your friend and wants to reattach itself to your neck so that you may continue your adventures together in this strange world. Uh, Savoir Fair. I've got a 28% chance. It's a white check. I may retry it. Uh, that's medium to grab the tie. I'm gonna pull on the fan. The blades come to a squeaking halt. It should be easier to grab the tie now. Oh, sweet! All right, yeah, I got plus three effectively to my self welfare stat due to that. We roll it, medium success. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap! It's released from the blade. Warning, warning, the necktie is no longer contained. <laughs> Item gained, horrific necktie. What you have in your hands is a fantastically colored tie. And four or f uh, with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. Medium success. If it's your friend, why was it up there? Who ties their friend to a ceiling fan? Maybe this thing is dangerous somehow. An ominous foreboding feeling fills you as you look on the tie. Pull on the light bulb. A terrible mistake. Turn the lights off immediately. You can feel the photons burning a hole in your brain. Bring it on. I got... Yet... Yeah. <laughs> Endurance. You feel something in your chest. An unnatural press uh, pressure. It's spreading your left arm. Your jaw. Gosh damn it. And is this seriously going to happen to me again? So I'm guessing this is bad. Very bad. Very bad. This is the end bad. Try to remain conscious. <laughs> All you feel is pain and weakness. You have to surrender now. We all do. It gets so dark. You don't even see her face like you always thought you would. You only see pain and fear. I'm dead. Well, my name was Rhapsody. The name of the game was Disco Elysium. Hopefully you've been enjoying it. Of course we can continue. What are you kidding me? Cop suffers final heart attack. A detective lieutenant of the RCM passed away yesterday. His death, though abrupt, did not come as a surprise to those who'd met him. He was the heaviest drinker I'd ever met, Captain Ptolemy Price, the deceased superior officer, com uh, commented. That ain't easy on the ticker. He loved his liquor, sure, said Detective Chester McLean, friend and colleague. But I think if he, uh, before he had a heart attack, his heart was broken. According to the official statement given by the RCM, the officer was on the brink of solving a murder case. D can I... Okay, so that's the that's the practice file that I had before. So I have to make another character because I I died. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! All right, uh, I had that 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 was that. Uh, actually, no, it was that. Yep. Next. And then I believe I tag rhetoric. I'll confirm that and then go through. <laughs> I should have saved. <sighs> I turned on the light and had a heart attack as a result. Yeah, it sounds about right. There is nothing. Ever, ever, ever. 
Uh, you know what? I'm going to take a different track here. Simply keep on non-existing. No idea no matter how time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. This is great. Yes, it is. Give me some more. You got it, sweet brother. Nothing upon nothing upon nothing. How about you cough up some of the that, 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 that sweet oblivion? Coming right up, sir. Smooth passage. Allons-y, let's go. Right, nothing town to fuck all, borough. I should mention at this point that uh, th this game does contain uh, what might traditionally be known as uh, curses or swear words. Uh, when they are part of the dialogue, I will read them out. So for that reason, as well as the fact that there are certain things as in sexual references and drug references in this game, I don't necessarily recommend this to those of you under the age of 18. A return to the silence, please. Let's visit the ancient Zero home. Look, there's a... There's, I'm tired of being this type of animal, and who gives a shit? Return trip to the silence, please. You want me to upgrade that to a one-way trip, sir? Don't stop, keep singing. Sing me the sweet song of death. The song of death is sweet and endless. But what is this? Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meat around you. A sensation. Oh? Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert, hurting, longing, dancing to disco music. Volition. Medium. Success. You can take it. You're cha oh, I only rolled enough to get it, exactly. You can take it. You're champion. Mother, help me. There's a head attached to my neck and I'm in it. Stop. I don't want to hear any more about this sensation. Take me back to the formless, disembodied nothing. No, I am not scared. I am a champion. I have to go with that. A stench of neck arises from your mouth and with it an ungodly headache. Help! Someone! Cut my head off. It's trying to murder the rest of me. Who am I? What sort of creature does this to their own mouth? Okay, I'm a bit scared now. Let's go back to the dark. Uh, let's go back to the a dark. Fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open to sound. Somehow you know what it is. A Caprice Kinema Motor Carriage. Open our eyes. Okay. Two things I'm going to make sure that I do at the very start of this, because we're 40 minutes in and only starting the game, uh, is the episode's going to be at least an hour long so that we can continue doing some stuff. Uh, but also, I'm going to very quickly go here, voiceover up, environment slightly down, music slightly down, UI slightly down, that all slightly down. Save game. Save. Yep, overwrite that one. Don't need it. All right, let's get some pants on. Let's get that shirt on. That's what I was going to do next after the tie. Okay. No other clothing there. Fine. All right, don't kill me this time, fan, please. Pull on the fan, grab the tie. <gasps> you reach out and grab the tie, but what's this? Diffuse, radiating chest pain. Doom comes over you. Grab your chest. Damaged health, negative one. You are absolutely kidding me. <laughs> I'm sure it's just heartburn. Oh, God. No, it's many years of combined self-neglect and self-abuse. Try to remain conscious. I'm dead. <laughs> I never thought that the tie was going to be the big problem that I would have. The tie is like the, uh, the Asylum Demon, or whatever the version of the Asylum Demon is in Demon Souls. I can't remember the name of it. The Butcher, or something like that? Or it's, uh, uh, Eudix Gundir. What I'm saying is it's the first boss of the game that you're usually going to die against. 
I am not leaving this room without a tie. Oh! <laughs> I'm dead again. I wonder if this game has the uh, ha has any gating to make sure that you don't just save and then redo a roll like we're currently doing effectively. Help, someone. Yeah, screaming isn't going to happen on account of extreme shortness of breath. You're just making it worse. God, it's painful. Let it all go. <laughs> all right. Let's go again. Maybe I don't need the tie. But I want it so bad. Okay, get the shirt on. D item game, disco as blazer. I love it. All right, let's go into this room. You see bottles in the bathtub, wine, beer, and sweet liqueurs. Perception, hearing. You hear a jingle. Fishes, uh, keys are in your pocket. Yep, we'll get those. door there. There's a mirror that I get to interact with. Oh, shirt. Sure. There we are. Uh, a mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone looks to have ripped half of the faucet off. Hot water sprays from the base and steam covers the mirror. You can't see yourself, just the outline of a man. You suddenly realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there underneath the salt vapor. Really? Nothing? Really? All recollection of the person you are, the people in your life, and even the world you're in has been drowned in a sea of blood alcohol. There's no mere night of drinking. It was a deluge of world-ending proportions. Wipe the mirror. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror, Inland Empire, easy, success. Abort! You clearly haven't thought this through. You won't like what you see under there, and you will never unbecome it. I don't care. Still wipe the mirror, or maybe I should touch it first. Make sure there's nothing wrong with my face. Let's do that one. Yeah, there's definitely something wrong with it. What? What's wrong? Where do you even begin? There's the bloatedness, then the swollenness? It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol under your skin. I'm sorry. Touch your nose. At least my tongue is okay. Touch your tongue. I'm scared. I want to stop doing this or wipe the mirror now. I'm, gonna, I'm sorry. I touched my nose. Bet you are. Your nose smells like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it, and it doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. At least my tongue is okay. It's not. It's swollen and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. Wipe the mirror now. Oh! Hey, you kind of look like, uh... Oh, uh, yeah, you know how, uh, like, in comics, drunks are always drawn with a particularly red nose from burst blood vessels? I don't know if that's, like, a thing that, uh, you know, is directly caused by reality. But it's nice to see that immediately paralleled here. I mean, he kind of looks a little bit swab. You look really run down in the portrait, but here you kind of look a little bit swab, a little bit handsome, even. I do love that style of, uh, of beard. I'd grow it if I could, but unfortunately I can barely grow a slight moustache. Behold! You have no idea who this thing is, do you? Dear Lord, help me, what is this? Of course I do. It's, um, some kind of superstar? I think I'm a superstar. This is the face of a late-stage alcoholic. Yeah. Too late. You clearly have rigor mortis on your face, so wait, is that... An expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? I'm not making it. The face is making itself. I have no idea why it's just there. It is. I'm not making it. The face is making itself. Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. No. Keep making the face. You... You can't. Can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You've worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? Superstardom? God, I don't know. It's indescribable. I think it's supposed to look suggestive. I'm afraid it's meant for the ladies. It's insinuating a vague, uh, that I'm vaguely sympathetic. I think I'm sort of pulling it off, too, in a sad has-been kind of way. There's some charm to it. It's an expression of pain. Uh, I'm, I'm going with the fourth. Ooh, interesting. Uh, there might have been 
10 years ago, it's a little more of a cadaverous spasm now. Uh, formidable role on encyclopedia, dig deep into your mind to locate the source of the expression, low chance and very low chance on electrochemistry. I'm gonna try encyclopedia. Formidable fla uh, failure. Oh, we weren't even that far from, fa uh, from succeeding though. Yeah, exactly, I was one off. Like the rest of you, it comes from a bad place somewhere in the past. That's all you know for now. Well, nothing bad happens. I'll try electrochemistry too. 3%. Failed. It's too late. Like image on film, the expression belongs to a primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. I love that that updated my portrait as well. Okay. Pop that shirt on. Actually, hang on. Before I do the tie, I'm going to save again. <laughs> uh, Alright, here we go. Time for the first boss of the game. Failed. I died. I, I rolled double one! That's always a failure, no matter what. Yeah, so I'm, d I'm just dead now, alright? Yeah, let's, uh, let's load the previous one. I'm feeling like maybe I just don't get a tie. I'm just not allowed a tie. I am too fa uh, frail and feeble uh, to deserve a tie. Give it one more go. Time me up. Hey, got him. You swoop and catch the tie, snap. It's no longer contained. And we've seen all of that dialogue before. I'm gonna leave, don't turn the light on, otherwise I die, of course. Ooh, I even have a shoe. Oh, only one shoe though. Um, okay, there's a broken mirror over here. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. I'm gonna use the visual calculus, assess the damage. 83%. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. Did I break it with my own hands? Look at them. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it's recent. What did this then? More than likely a projectile. More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after an impact. Assess the size of the impact. It's too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fist. Shoe. A single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations, you smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you can find the other one out on the balcony outside. The door to it should still be outside your room. Maybe it wasn't me? I should go get that shoe. Or I don't need it anymore. I don't need anyone. Uh, I should go get that shoe. Five experience, sweet. Cool wind gushes in, let's go find that shoe. Sure. Hang on, it's tab, yeah, tab will show me the highlighted, or rather it will highlight interactable objects. Good. There's something on this table. Uh, looks like 40 cents, uh, 40 real. Appears to be the currency in the game then. Revishol is pronounced Revishol. Orange, Orange, uh, and Klasia. Sweet! I, I really appreciate a pronunciation guide, game. <laughs> Seriously, much, much appreciated. Yep, just the shoe out here, fair enough. Let's pop back in. It does look like my character has something to say. Maybe it's only something to say out on the balcony, so I should probably go back out. Yeah, it's, it's only out on the balcony, apparently. It might be perception. Uh, in fact, I think that's quite likely. So it seems like uh, you instigate your own skill checks on yourself when stuff is around your head. The smell of sea makes you dizzy. No, okay, so it's it's just a, uh, it's it's your interaction with the broader environment that isn't necessarily something that could be highlightable. Sweet. I'm still learning this game. Like, my my adventure with this game ended when I went downstairs. The calendar says it's March. The year, it's fifty one. Class year. Miss Aranya uh, Disco Dancer. 
The young woman raises a cigarette to her lips. Officer? Am I military personnel? Uh, no. She seems perplexed by your question. There's only one solution to this. You're a businessman. Wait, I know. I'm a businessman. Chief executive officer, right? No, she shakes her head. Okay, chief technical officer? No, you're a police officer, sir. Are you sure? You're shitting me. Goddamn right I'm a policeman and you don't forget it. You're shitting me. I'm not. Unless you've been shitting us all this time. She takes another drag. All this time? You've been here for three days. On official police business, no less. And what business would that be? I couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. <laughs> this is a red trek, uh, check. It cannot be retried, but a 42% chance to use the expression on her. Uh, why don't I remember being a cop? Or anything else? Who in their right mind would let me be an officer of the law? I'm going to go with the second one, actually. Don't be so harsh on yourself. They let almost anyone be a police officer. A glib remark. Don't let it stand. Assert yourself. Actually, I can see why they would entrust me with the law. I have the right character. I'm going to let it go. Why don't I remember being a cop or anything else? Retreat is not a winning tactic. Could be because of the drinking. She raises an eyebrow and the cigarette sizzles. All right, suggestion. Failed. The words have already left your mouth. I want to have fuck with you. <laughs> she erupts in laughter. All the fatigue swept from her face. What was that? That's not even how words are used. What did you say? Come on, say it again. No, I don't want to. Come on, man. Pretty please. One more time. Don't back down now. Say what you said again. Proudly, authority is forcing me to do this. All right, I said, I want to have fuck with you. Goddamn right you did, you crazy asshole, you. She wipes tears from her eyes. What kind of cop are you? I'm a cop of the apocalypse. Superstar cop, and I can no longer deny it. I'm sorry, I don't know why I said that. You're pretty, I'm sorry. I'm the sorry cop. I'm not sure I'm a cop at all. I'm sure I don't remember one. R remember being one, rather. I think I might have lied. I'm the sorry cop. Don't be, it was funny. And anyway, who gives a shit? Who gives a shit about any of it? She appears to genuinely want you to understand it's okay. So what if you can't pull grade A pussy anymore? There are other things in life, more meaningful, more fitting for a man of your age. This, she gestures towards herself draped in silver. This is a fate Morgana. One thing, though, she extinguishes her cigarette. It's going to suck for you later when you have to interrogate me. Ah. And for the record, no, I didn't do it. Oh, cheers. Never mind. Don't have to interrogate you. Looks like she's left a nice long stub in the ashtray. It's still smoking. I wonder if I can take it for, like, DNA evidence or something. Nope. Doesn't appear to be possible. This is the weekend edition of the satirical newspaper Trompe de le Monde. Trompe le Monde, rather. Sorry. Unfortunately, not familiar with the words enough to, to do it. Uh, failed white checks can be retried by increasing the relevant skill. Good to know. So I, I can probably go back and change my expression at some point. Maybe. This is where the lyrics would be. A big old karaoke mic just waiting for someone to sing into it. And the speaker is connected to the radio. The music is seasoned with static. <laughs> ah, I love just interesting and fun turns of phrase and uses of language. Like it's seasoned with static. Oh. Let's talk. Garter, the cafeteria manager, a man in his late 20s, stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. That was uh, disdain in his eyes. 
Even now, he's purposefully ignoring you. I'm going to look at the stuffed bird. A competent work of taxidermy. A white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and dry, uh, drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it. Most likely on the wall. This is a great score. The seabird is the symbol of discovery of the Indilusian Isla. Insul uh, sorry, Insulidian. Insulindian? We'll go with that. Uh, Insulindian Isla, the part of the world you are in right now. Something about it makes you feel bitter. That's the Great Squaw, right? Look, your buddy is over there. He looks towards the doors, where a man in a bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? What do you mean, my buddy? He pretends not to hear you, concentrating on the bird instead. Something tells me you don't like me. Oh, no. You're a hero. A real hero, cop. Could be massive property damage upstairs. Has something to do with this? So not only am I a cop, I'm also a hero? You're being sarcastic. You're being sarcastic. Am I? Or did you ride in? Take the body down, solve the murder, and not trash my hostel room. Oh god, I did all those things? I'm guessing I didn't do any of those things. I do not appreciate your tone. This is no way to talk to an officer. Uh, so the, ch the choices that I'm not going to select, I won't necessarily read out, just because there is so much dialogue in this game, unless they are pointedly funny. Alright, guessing I didn't do any of those things? You're right, you didn't. And it's only taken you three days not to. What have I been doing all that time? Have you seen me around? No, I haven't seen you around. I'm not always here. He looks... <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> he looks down again and keeps plucking at the bird. Are you the bartender? No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. You look like a bartender. That period of my life is over. Not everyone who stands behind the counter is a bartender. Okay. I'm the cafeteria manager. What's the difference? I have three cafeterias to manage. Three. Sylvie tends the bar here, not me. I'm only standing in. Ah, so at the moment you're a bartender? Uh, where did this Sylvie go? She just, you know. <laughs> he shrugs. His eyes dart from left to right. The man isn't lying, but he is hiding something. She just... What? So now you're a cop? Forget it. No, I'm not the bartender. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't like that I have to leave that conversation, but okay. Inland Empire, you should totally sing karaoke here the first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know of your vast oceanic soul. My soul is immense. My soul is modest. It's normal sized. My soul is puny. My soul's cubic content is obscured by the hangover. Of course, at this point, Precise measurement of your soul can only be performed from the outside. It needs to be heard through a PA system by other people. What should I sing when it comes to it? You've not yet stumbled on the right lamentation, but it's out there. It'll come to you. You'll wreak havoc with it. Don't worry. Lamentation sounds good. They'll really get a gauge on my soul with that. I was thinking I could sing something happy, get the people going. Lamentation sounds good. Serves them right. Wipe that smirk off their face with your sad, tragic song. Who's laughing now? No one. You saw sing karaoke. <laughs> All right. I'm going to finish the thought then. I don't really have anything to sing at the moment though. So. Oh, hell yeah. An auto save. Now I don't have to worry about dying when I attempt to sing karaoke and trip moving myself up the pallets. Immediately clashing my head. Just bumping it very, very slightly against the stand and immediately dying. Sleeping dock worker. A man is sleeping on the table, wearing mud-caked boots and rolled-down overalls. The back of his shirt reads, Wild Pines, encircled with a logo and a tree. Oh, that's not gonna work. On the counter, rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. Pick up the pills. Ah, magnesium. Perfect. The man does not mind. You probably need it more than he does. Tutorial agent. You've just picked up medicine. The item is stored in the bottom left of the screen, above your character's portrait. There we are. Uh, click the pass to yield your morale if you have morale damage. Well, I have a headache that's blinding apparently, but I have no missing morale, so I'm just going to leave. I'm not going to try and uh, steal those. A bottle of rum has been knocked over. Beautiful dark liquid is spilling out. 
Now, I happen to know that talking to this character is going to initiate a very long dialogue, and we just hit the hour mark. So at the moment, I'm going to say, my name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Disco Elysium. If you did like the video, please click like. It does help get my content out to new people, and it's very, very important on the first couple episodes of any new series. Uh, I will also say, if you aren't subscribed to the channel and you'd like to see more content like this, or more content dissimilar to this, including deck builders and roguelikes, please feel free to subscribe. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.